Hi, my name is Christine. Today I'm going to be talking about COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus, and how it has been a devastating crisis that has been affecting the world lately. So I'm going to talk about the harms first. So Google has an alert page that updates you on COVID. It gives information, statistics, and what places have it, how many cases they have, and so on and so forth. So about 37 million people have been affected by the virus worldwide, and about 1.07 million people have died from the virus so far. No one is safe from the virus, unless you're asymptomatic, of course. That means you won't get any symptoms, but you could still pass the virus on, even if you don't feel sick. That's what asymptomatic is. So there are also people that have higher risks of having a harder time with the virus due to a compromised immune system or age, whether they're an infant or they're an older person. It just is unsafe right now to affect those type of people, but anybody and everybody really, because you don't know how their body's going to react to the virus. We all don't know. It's a new virus. It's new to all of us. We don't know what to do, really. So there are certain behaviors and attitudes that can help fix what's going on or add to what's going on. And so the CDC and Hopkins Medicine highly suggests you follow certain guidelines, such as wearing masks in public, no social gatherings, or if you do gather, very little people, very little people, staying home, keeping your house safe and clean, and keeping yourself safe and clean. And really, we shouldn't be going out at the moment unless it's essential, as in jobs, school, or grocery shopping, stuff like that, or stay home, because you don't know if you're going to affect others or yourself. So ABC Columbia actually put out an article about why people might not want to follow these certain guidelines due to the virus. And that is because first, compassion fatigue, which means that people after a while get tired of caring about something. It's been around so much, they choose not to care about it or choose not to let it make them fearful. So they decide that they don't want to do that kind of stuff and live in fear. But really, I get it, but you're putting others at risk and yourself and your family and whoever else you may come in contact with at that point. The second reason is confirmation bias. Confirmation bias means you start to really believe in something you want to happen, such as people wanting to believe in normalcy again. I want to be normal again, so I'm going to believe everything's normal and I'm going to ignore it, which of course, once again, is putting everyone at risk, including yourself, really. So there is also another thing. It's a new virus, of course, but they don't have a vaccine for it. So the FDA and National Geographic Health Science has a page where they update you on the progress of the vaccine, whether what's going on with it, what new things are happening, who's coming in to help, and when it may possibly be done. So there is also a solution. The solution is to stay home. Keep yourself clean. If you have to go out in public, wear a mask. Compromise some small things so we can get back to normalcy. Because if we just keep doing the things we're doing now, all we're going to do is lead ourselves to a path of death or just having to consistently be quarantined for the rest of our lives or having to live in this state of fear. So we can follow the guidelines as much as possible and it can help. There are other places on um, world of worldometers and it shows you like how other places are doing and how they're doing things and why it's helping them pretty much. And other European countries I read of have actually been quarantined longer than we have and they've been having to follow the guidelines strictly like they couldn't go anywhere for a while. But overall, it has benefited them, and they're actually able to go out more freely. They don't have to wear masks 
as much. They don't have to do certain things as much because they're following these guidelines and they're sticking to it. And it's overall benefiting them in the end. And I feel like together we can do that. So overall, coronavirus has been a devastating crisis for the world face. It is scary. But if we work together as a team, follow these guidelines, stick through it, and just be safe, we can fight this virus and get somewhat back to normalcy. Because right now, I don't think we're getting on that path there quite yet.